Hey everyone, as mentioned, my name is Brian Lauder and I'm director of e-commerce for the Coca-Cola company. I've worked at Coca-Cola for the past 13 years. The first 10 were spent in food service supporting national restaurant brands, some of which are in the room today. I've had the privilege of leading all of our digital partnerships for the past three years and excited to talk a little bit about how we evaluate technology, the trends that we're focused on moving forward, and some of the ways that we look at the business for the, the next 45 minutes. Morning, Melissa Foz. Uh, been with Coca-Cola a long time. Uh, originally joined the organization in the brand team and had a wonderful opportunity to launch some of our big brands out there, including Coke Zero, if there's any Coke Zero uh, fans in here, or Diet Coke with Lime back in the day. Uh, and then I went into a variety of different roles, spanning commercial, customer, strategic, M&A, uh, and eventually got into the digital space uh, in digital commerce, particularly for the restaurant industry first in the aggregator space, and then uh, now what I do is lead Coca-Cola's largest business-to-business -business customer engagement platform, and customers are predominantly restaurants in this space. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience to kind of go from more of a consumer-oriented uh, area of the business to more business-oriented area of the business. Uh, we've seen great success on our platform. It's called mycoke.com. Uh, and we've tripled it in the past three years. So we have about 135,000 restaurant operators using the platform today. Uh, they can order 24 seven, they can submit equipment service requests or customer service requests. Um, and uh, you know, I got involved with Mert Restaurant Technology Conference, I think like six to seven years ago. And I'm looking at Angela because she was the magic that kind of brought me in. Uh, and what was so amazing about it was just this opportunity to get to talk to a lot of restaurant uh, folks that we don't get to talk to that often. Um, and it's just so valuable to hear how you guys talk to each other and what's keeping you up at night. Um, and we really appreciate being able to be here. Um, what we're going to share today is just really our perspective on trends that we're keeping an eye on and how we kind of think about the landscape. But I do want to just humbly note that this is a perspective, right? It's, it's kind of how we look at it based on the knowledge investment we make at Coca-Cola. Um, but I'm sure everyone in this room has their own perspective as well, and we would love to hear it, you know, in the unstructured times or reception or what have you. We'd love to hear your thinking or your challenges to how we're thinking. Um, so Brian and I are here. I also want to thank and introduce Gus Rios Raggio, who's in the, uh, like, burnt sienna crayon shirt, I guess, um, like copper colored. Uh, he actually leads our marketing and customer engagement team on the mycoke.com B2B platform. Um, so with that, thank you for having us here, and I'll turn it back to Brian. Technology is universal. It's practical, inspiring, sometimes terrifying, and it's touching every corner of society in new and unique ways. Let's take a quick look. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. On Earth, digital fabrics are embedded with sensors and displays. Gathering data, they give feedback about the user's health, such as muscle use, sleep habits, and sun exposure. Companies merge digital fabrics with VR gaming, letting users feel vibrations and hot and cold sensations when playing. Humans begin to interact with virtual reality artificial life. Living beings in a digital world that learn how to act, move, and interact with humans on their own, creating their own behaviors and way of life. Wearable tech is replaced by subdermal tech. Chips that are inserted beneath the skin and link users to their home and robotic devices, giving them control using verbal instructions. Quantum computers are used in high-end chemical engineering. They are able to quickly design new medicines, biodegradable plastics, and building materials. 5G networks carrying vast amounts of data take control of transportation flow systems and self-driving networks to improve urban flow. The first artificial intelligence judge sentences a criminal to jail. People are now working in completely virtual workspaces. 
Digital fabrics evolve into power assist fabrics, helping humans walk and gain back mobility in old age. They also give humans added strength and show users how to learn new physical skills. 4D printing is being used to create new smart materials, materials that are able to transform their structures in response to their environment, such as when exposed to heat or light. People are now living with 3D bioprinted artificial organs. Everyday people are living with IA, brain chips for intelligence amplification, allowing their thinking, memories, and problem solving to be helped with the use of a machine. Subdermal tech is overtaken by neural links. People are wearing self-cleaning fabrics that are woven with micro-metals which break down dirt when exposed to sunlight. Humanity is on course to become a type 3 galactic scale civilization, needing to use all of the energy available in its galaxy. With technology so advanced that space-time is their playground. So technology is really removing the boundary lines that we've had historically between kind of the physical, digital, and otherworldly spaces. Um, and you know, having studied consumers for a long time, uh, I would say that uh, a few years back, actually, I said, you know, have you heard this? Uh, technology has never moved this fast, and it will never move this slow again. Anyone heard that? This is what I. This is what I would say. Consumers have never been this unreasonable, and they will never be this reasonable again. <laughs> and that was before the pandemic, and now we have created a monster. There is just no desire to be limited. There's no desire to be compromised. There's no desire to make a choice. I don't want to. I don't want to have to. If I may, if I choose one, that means I can't have the other. So I don't want that. I want both. I want gas electric cars, gas electric stoves. I want fusion, fusion food, right? Rest, fusion restaurants used to be like unique and trendy and edgy, and now they're commonplace. We have uh, ombre hairstyles and, and nail styles, right? Like I'm not gonna pick one color, I'm gonna have potentially two or three colors as I go from my roots to my ends. Um, hybrid work, working from home, working away from home, quiet quitting kind of working, kind of quitting, and the COVID wardrobe, right? Business on the top, pajamas on the bottom. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to kind of make this compromise. I see it with my kids. So I, I have two sons. They're 13 and 15 year old. They're 13 and 15 years old. I adore them. It like doesn't occur to them that they don't know how to do something or they can't do something. They just YouTube it. They just go on there and teach themselves how to do it. It's amazing. Uh, and we see this blurring, this kind of consumer-driven blurring of the lines, spanning into channels, commerce, business, need states of the consumer. And what that's really doing is driving this need to, you know, we've always needed innovation. Now it's like even more critical than ever before. It has to be considered in an even more open-minded, growth-minded perspective than ever before. And it's really putting you know, pressure on the industry to be able to address this very, very unreasonable consumer that we all know and love. The change in the consumer dynamic has changed the way we at Coca-Cola plan. Previously, we just planned present forward. What's the next year gonna do? What's the next 18 months? <clears throat> the pandemic and technology has shown us that not only do we have to plan present forward, but we have to be hyper-focused on planning future back. Today, we're gonna to take a little deeper dive into three of the, the trends that we look at at Coca-Cola. What's happening now? What's impacting the current business? Things that everyone in this room is already aware of. We may give a new perspective on how to leverage those or use those to drive consumer engagement. Things that are new, things that are gonna come available in the next 18 to 36 months that have the potential to impact our industry. And the things that are next, the things that we're hyper-focused at Coca-Cola at understanding and understanding the implications to not only our business, but consumers and society over the next five to 10 years. Thank you. I'm gonna kick off with the now segment, so kind of what we're seeing now shaping consumers. Um, and I'm gonna, 
the, the three trends we're going to walk through is digital marketplaces, hyperconnectivity, and digital safety and risk. So starting with digital marketplaces, did somebody just say wow? No? Because I was like, I haven't even got started. It's not that good yet. Um, by the way, there's a crack in this floor that I'm pretty much guaranteed to fall into. So when I do that, just, you know, give grace. Um, but really, in a post-pandemic world, everything is a digital marketplace. You can shop, not while standing in front of your fridge, but literally shop on your fridge, or your Fitbit can give you recipes that fit kind of the, the fitness goals you may have or eating preferences that you have. Um, really, almost any device today is a digital marketplace. Um, and it's really the, fostering and supporting this like shop anywhere, everywhere, all the time mentality. Uh, and expectation in consumers. So some of, some of the examples of things we're seeing, uh, digitally enabled platforms that address food waste. So uh, food, Flash Food is an example of a digital platform that works with companies like restaurants for food that is either um, overstocked or maybe going out of date, spoiling, but not spoiled yet they provide an opportunity to sell that to people at a really discounted rate. And consumers or people with food insecurities are able to take advantage of that opportunity to help kind of relieve some of that. So great example of where digital and technology is bringing two people with needs together and creating a win for everyone. <clears throat> Another example is tokens collectibles. I don't know if you've heard of this. This is a uh, kid-friendly, uh, kid parent-centric NFT platform, so non-fungible tokens. It's got all the kind of parental permissions you would want on anything your young kids are using. Uh, it has gaming. It has a marketplace. Last month, they inked a partnership with Mattel. So giving kids a chance to kind of build their skills, because they're probably going to need this in about 20 years when they're shopping in the marketplace, right? So I'm imagining my conversation with my grandchildren in the future. I had to walk uphill both ways to school, and my dad paid me my allowance in cash. Oh my gosh. Cash, what is that? A third example, you know, we see the social platforms adding commerce to try to monetize their consumer base. We see e-commerce sites trying to add social so that they have, they're in the customer conversation because you can't really distinguish the two. One of the things we've seen Amazon do recently is they have an internet famous page on their website now that really uh, was kind of inspired by the TikTok trend and the kind of demand that, that the TikTok videos out there have. Who has kids like under 18? Cool. So they're on TikTok, right? Yeah. So, you know, when we think about kind of what are the, what are the things you want to take away from here, um, I think it's, it's necessary to recognize the importance of the digital marketplace, but um, don't be overly endeared by the shiny object. So ghost kitchens, that is a, as an example. Uh, there's, a ghost, there's a restaurant concept, digital-only restaurant concept, had a site in uh, one of the cloud kitchens, kitchens and closed shop even though they were the best performing shop in that complex of restaurants, the economics didn't work. So it can, it can seem great, and it e can even look great in the beginning, but you know, particularly in the technology space, you have so many uh, companies where they are, they're, they, their product sounds fantastic, but they haven't yet demonstrated the ability to generate a profit. No offense to startups in the room. Um, so you got to really be, be, be paying attention to the failures of the past. You know, think about what are the rights to win? What, is, what do you have to win to succeed? Um, and then be prepared. So you know, uh, we have a good example where we probably weren't as prepared as we needed to be. Uh, when you think about the kind of demand that technology can generate. So a couple years back, Stranger Things. Anybody watch Stranger Things? It was sets back in like the 80s, right? So we thought it would be so cool to have New Coke integrated in the Stranger Things story. If you remember New Coke, it launched for a little while and then went away. Um, so when they showed that episode, we said it would be super cool to have the ability to sell, like 
let consumers buy new Coke digital only for a limited time. And that worked for about 45 minutes, and then we crashed the site because of the kind of demand that it generated. I have about 10 friends who spent the, every minute from the time that site crashed until 6 a.m. the next morning trying to address it. So, you know, that's what you got to watch out for. Like, expect the unexpected. If we can go back one slide, please. Um, and don't succumb to pressure. So it's kind of on that same theme of just being really thoughtful as you go forward in this. When everything is a digital marketplace, people become hyper-connected. Hyper-connectivity in the way that we engage with consumers is something that we're super focused on at Coca-Cola. Consumers have started not only to expect, but demand that everything that they experience in the physical life, they can experience digitally or virtually. Whether that be working, dating, working out, socializing. And hyper-connectivity creates amazing opportunity. It also comes with risks. There's the opportunity to engage consumers through food service aggregators and have them order from multiple platforms in one trip, optimizing the drive time so that the locations that they stop at are on the route to your house. Off-premise solutions are becoming more advanced, allowing for temperature control to either allow food to be delivered to supply chain, to restaurants, or to end consumers in the best way. From a Coca-Cola perspective, people can check the inventory on their freestyle machine anywhere in the world. This hyper-connectivity is allowing us to engage with the business and consumers like ways that we had never, have, can, never have before. One of the things that we continue to look at is the smart home technology. The smart home technology like Alexa and Google Home and those things will become a $250 billion business in the next two years. So how do we support that from a Coca-Cola and a restaurant industry? How do we engage in that part of the business where hyper-connectivity allows us to say, hey, Alexa, please order my favorite Friday, Friday night meal, or please order breakfast for the kids. Those are the things that we're looking at and trying to understand, not only from a consumer perspective, but back of house. I love this stat on the six out of 10 are, are ex cutting back on, on social network. Um, well, that's what people say. I'm not sure I believe it. You know, I think everybody says in the new year, this is going to be the year that I get healthy. I'm going to um, work out every morning. What people say in their actions don't always align. And what we found is that people are continuing to be even more connected through their Fitbit, through their devices, through the at-home technology. And as I mentioned, with that becomes great opportunity and great risk. We've done testing at Coca-Cola that shows engaging with consumers at the wrong place, time, or frequency will drive massive rejection in your brand. So how do you make sure that you're approaching consumers at the right time, in the right space, and at the right frequency? Consumers want you to be transparent, as well as employees. They want to know what you're doing with your, their data, how it's being leveraged, and um, being transparent is something that we're working on as an organization, and I would encourage you to do as well. The third trend within our now kind of framework is digital safety and risk. <clears throat> Are there Fortinet people in the room? Anyone? No? All right. They're just, not, they're just being shy. I swear, I built this slide before knowing that you were going to be here, but thank you for being a great sponsor. Um, you know, everyone's afraid of being hacked. Uh, consumers are very worried about it. And so what we're seeing is technology, yes, is enabling the hacking, but is also being sourced to help address the hacking um, and really kind of taking your more beneficial hackers to help secure people personally as well as businesses. Uh, so we're seeing the rise of um, privacy-oriented search engines uh, where they don't use Google Analytics or only use it if it's really necessary and they have anti-fingerprint identification. Just giving people an opportunity like, yeah, I'm going to give it up a little bit of service, right? It's not Google, but it is protecting that privacy. Um, Anti-tracking security software, same idea. And um, this is good. Like, I, How many people have had a smart speaker talk to you when you didn't use the wake word, right? So this company, um, Prevetto Home, I think is what they're called, they have an actual anti-listening device. It's literally something you physically put on your speaker, and it creates noise that you can't hear, but that somehow jams the ability of that speaker to transmit data back to 
Google or whoever else is, is in your home. And then you use a special word to kind of deactivate it so you can actually lose, use the smart speaker. <clears throat> so um, this is an interesting one. So Google has this project called Project Zero to really protect consumer cyber rights. And so their mission is around protecting you, the Google user, from criminals or uh, you know, state-sponsored, government-sponsored bad actors. So they don't exploit your computer or steal your secrets or monitor your communications. Google. I'll just let the irony sink in on that one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, again, proactive, proactive measures, preventative measures can really help reduce that digital risk, that digital vulnerability. We see just the rate of cyber attack go up year over year over year. And companies do get a little wary, sorry, customers, consumers get wary of, of companies that have digital attacks. Now, I will tell you, Target had a famous one, and everyone is still shopping at Target and spending way more than they planned to when they walked in the store. But definitely something you want to be ready for, and you don't want to get too comfortable. Um, I was thinking, actually, even about our MyCoke.com platform, where we really haven't thought about what if we were hacked, and, and why not? Like, what's the harm in getting prepared? Like, what's the harm in writing a communication to our users to say, here's what's going on, and what are the first three phone calls we need to make, or, or what do we need to do? So being ready for that. Um, and then, you know, recognizing that the responsibility to, to mitigate risk and security spans not just your business, but also your employees, your consumers. And educating consumers on digital safety, risk, and privacy actually can uh, drive a 70% reduction in the rate of security incidents. So really important to engage them at kind of as part of your army. Now we're gonna look at some of the new and emerging trends. Some of the trends that we're focused on and understanding for the next 18 to 36 months, the impacts that they could potentially have to the business and consumers. The first trend is frictionless tech. Since the pandemic, well, even prior to the pandemic, Coke spends a tremendous amount of time trying to understand consumer behavior. What's driving purchase intent? What are they doing when they're not consuming food and beverages? And we really took a unique lens to that since the pandemic to understand how does this, what's impacting digital purchase intent? And the original assumption was it's quality or it's safety. And every time that we've tested this with consumers, it's convenience and speed is the number one factor in motivation in purchase intent for our beverages and for our customers. At Coca-Cola, we call it the click to convenience. Speaking of. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing we're looking at at Coca-Cola is how do artificial intelligence and automation and robotics simplify life for us, our back of house, and our supply chain. This frictionless tech will give you new opportunities to engage with consumers in new and unique ways. Interactive packaging will allow you to tell stories, drive loyalty, give brand preferences, and engage with consumers in new ways. One of the things that hasn't become prevalent in the food service industry, but we're looking at, is ways to simplify the checkout process. Is there something that we could do from an RFID tag or through a drive through that cuts out the second stop lane that simplifies the process and expedites the, the total experience? And then the rise of smart operations for back of house. How does artificial intelligence make sure that there's little waste and that your supply chain is optimized, making sure that food's arriving to the restaurant as fresh as possible, being used in a proper manner, and there's little waste? This frictionless tech, uh, again, there's areas of opportunity and there's area of, of risks. We would encourage you to find win-win applications, ways that you can engage with the consumer that are new and unique, but again, doesn't feel the over-the-top big brother uh, aspect that we talked about earlier. Understand the customer and consumer journey from your lens. Understand the areas and the, where you have the right to win. And Melissa, I believe you have an, another example yeah, of this as well. Yeah, and Gus will appreciate this one. So I have this business-to-business -business platform. It's amazing. You can interact with Coca-Cola 24-7 on any digital device, web, mobile. What's one of the pieces, biggest, you don't have to wait for your sales rep to come to place your order. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback we get. Hey, I, I, Sorry, I'm Gus, ready. can you go back? Yeah. My bad. Wow, way to step. 
At least you, at least you did it right before leading up. Yeah. One of the biggest pieces of feedback, I, I would still like to see my sales rep sometimes. Like, and we say, yes, you know what? You're so right. It has to be physical plus digital. And we also tell our system, like, <clears throat> don't look at this as a replacement of your sales reps, please. That's not what it's intended to do. What it's intended to do is allow your sales reps to not take, spend their time taking an order when they're in the customer's outlet and using the customer's precious time. Like, use that time to help talk to the customer, the restaurant, about how you can help grow their business. So, to really elevate the value and the, the, the value that you're able to get out of your human employees. So, I think this, this dehumanization point is really, really uh, valuable. I, one other quick story I'll tell you, since I told you I have a couple of kids, is I tell them, you got two careers I feel pretty good about you going into. Cybersecurity, what I just talked about, or psychiatry, because this continued technology is going to make us all lose our minds. I've got younger children, one and three, but I might steal that. <laughs> so now uh, Brian covered frictionless tech. I'm going to move into advanced materials processes and analyses. So just for some perspective, uh, you know, 4D printing was highlighted in the video. You know, 3D printing, we know what that is. Now 4D is basically you print something that's physical, but it doesn't have a fixed shape tying all the way back to like, why do I have to compromise, right? Why should something that's a solid have to stay solid and not be able to move? Um, so uh, really looking at the different ways that um, you can really morph things that used to be fixed. Um, and so I think I'll run the video. Hey, pizza. Oh, all right, wait. just wait. Your turn. Like, when it's ready, could you just shove it in my mouth? <laughs> Don't you be a smart ass. I'll break the atrocity channel. Hydrate level four, please. Ooh. Is it ready? Here you go. Oh boy, oh boy, mom. You sure can hydrate a pizza. Anyone remember that? That's a Back to the Future 2, I think. Um, you know, you look at uh, predictive analytics. You know, that's a, that's a $30 billion business today. It's grown 7x in the last five years. Um, now, what I'll say about that video is, you know what was most amazing to me is that uh, she didn't use a pot holder to pull that hot pan. Like, so clearly, not only can you hydrate your pizza, but there's also pans that don't conduct heat while yet still cooking the food. So that's pretty cool. Um, we're seeing some really cool stuff in this place. And I just kind of called this elevating dynamism because it really is around that not being fixed, not being static anymore. First example I'm going to talk about is smart textiles, materials that, can, that actually have function. So this, uh, what you see on the slide here is Bella Hadid. Uh, did anyone see this? This was so cool. So she's out of Paris Fashion Week, of course. And she gets on, she comes out onto the stage wearing underwear and, you know, hiding her private parts. And two gentlemen come onto the stage with spray painters, and they literally spray paint a dress onto her. <clears throat> then the designer of the dress comes out, makes a little adjustment to the shoulder, puts a little slit, and she walks the runway in this dress that just got painted onto her. And this is based on a new age fabric that um, forms it, kind of moves into a solid. So I'm going to do something that a speaker on stage, stage should never do, but you can look this up. It's a video worth watching. Uh, search Bella Hadid paint, spray painted dress, and many videos will come up. But please do that after. Um, second area, programmable wood. So there's now a, a composite type material that has features of wood, but also can uh, morph when activated. So imagine, and often it's activated by something like water. So imagine if you buy your flat packed IKEA furniture and you throw some water on it and assemble it itself. Like that would be amazing. That would eliminate a lot of pain. Uh, and the third, you know, uh, <clears throat> really using machine learning AI to advance our ability to make decisions that impact our business. So classically, Restaurants and other businesses have considered where they're going to locate their properties based on demographics, right? Traffic patterns, sociographics. But <clears throat> there's now a company looking at, yes, that and 
climate dynamics. Particularly now, we see an acceleration in the, the kind of frequency and severity of the climactic events that happen. So they pull in all this data that's also itself um, dynamic to give you an idea of like how risky is it to place a building here and let you make the right choices from that perspective. So this kind of ties to a little bit of what I talked about before. <clears throat> you don't want to rush into this. You don't want to take shortcuts. So take the time to do your own experiments. And, and Brian and I were talking about this yesterday. I think I haven't fallen in yet. I kind of want to switch sides with you. I'm <laughs> going to fall in the stage. <laughs> we were talking about this yesterday. Um, you know, we, at Coca-Cola, like, we won't, do, we won't take risks with things that are so foundational to our business, but we do try to experiment a lot in protected ways so that we can keep learning and, and encourage that as well. And then finding the right minds. So per the stat on this page, like, all due respect to the CEOs in the room, but if you are also the lead analyst on your business, that might be an opportunity to source some other talent. There's great minds out there. There's big data experts. Um, they're really important to make sure that this is being done in the right way. I think that's such an important uh, thing to touch on is at Coca-Cola, there's things that found, are foundational to our business that we won't touch. There's things that we're protected and we understand. But there's other areas where we know that we can fail forward. We're excited to experiment and we encourage failure because every time we fail, we learn something. We're going to touch a little bit now on next. And I don't think anybody in the room is probably surprised that augmented reality or hybrid reality is something that we're hyper focused on from a next perspective. We really do believe that this will not only change our industry, but it'll change society in the next five to 10 years. It'll change the way that loyalty is driven through blockchain technology, giving restaurants the ability to understand their consumer in ways that they never have before, giving them the opportunity to engage in different ways and add personalization. Our children will grow up in a future in augmented reality, understanding the ways in the imp uh, applications of how it can be used. One of the things I, I planned on talking about as part of this that actually became a reality this week was, you know, we are focused on a consumer that puts on a, a digital headset, has created their own digital food court in a hybrid or augmented reality. Can, how does your food look? How are the beverages represented? How are you engaging with the consumer? And then it's delivered to their door within minutes. Those are the type of things from hybrid and augmented reality that we want to make sure that we not only understand, but we're supporting the restaurants in the room and understanding as well. Hybrid reality will continue to add real life application and functionality and value. The things that I would say with hybrid reality is think about the application not only to the end consumer and the customer, but all aspects of your business. We've recently done testing with a number of retail partners where they are onboarding and training their employees through augmented reality. Those augmented reality and trained employees have double digit uh, increase in retention uh, staying with the business, retention in the information, and seeing the value in the training materials versus non-augmented reality. Augmented reality will have implications and impacts to all the business. With that, I'll hand it back to Melissa. Yep, so we're finishing up here. So I just wanted to share with you, first of all, thank you for, for allowing us to share our perspective again. And we just wanted to share some of the resources that we use to stay on top of our to stay on top of trends we see in the marketplace. This is in addition to just tons of work done back at Coca-Cola, again, to deeply understand that consumer. And we also pay a lot of attention to our own experiences. So I'm reminded of the, you were at a restaurant the other day, uh, one of the restaurants that's represented in the room. He runs to the restaurant, he's gonna get something to eat before he picks up his kids from school, gets there, orders his food, he's waiting for his food, and the system goes down at the restaurant. And they say, just wait a minute, we got our managers on the phone with IT. He waits one minute, two minutes, three minutes, like you know the fees those daycares charge or the school. Um, I, have to, I gotta go and finally the manager comes out and says, here's your food, it's on us, so sorry. And then tells everyone else, you know, we can't, can't serve you today. Like, what do you do if your point of sale system goes down? What do you do if you can't take payment? 
Um, I don't know that we can Venmo businesses. So I think these are the kinds of things to also think about in, in proofing your business, future-proofing your business and being ready. Does your frontline associate know what to do in that situation? Maybe the manager does. What if the manager isn't there? Um, so we have like real life experiences. We all get to be consumers, which is great because we can add that knowledge on top of all these people that spend a lot of time sort of professionally studying the science. Um, so I'm going to close with uh, an opportunity <clears throat> and a couple challenges. So the opportunity I would start with is to, you know, if you're not doing it already today, think about your business from a present forward, but also a future back mindset embed that future back mindset in your day to day. And it requires a different tolerance for risk. It requires in many cases that you have some people thinking about that that are isolated from the daily pressure to deliver the P&L results because the urgent will always take place of the very important. The challenge I would give you is to hire a challenger. So someone that can come in and push the thinking and, and like Come in, we were talking about it, loaning to do this at Coke, you bring them in, it's a six month assignment, they're not competing with the people they're challenging, but you bring them in to really push that thinking. And that is, their, that is literally their role. So that's challenge one. Challenge two is contact your Coca Cola sales rep and check out mycoke.com. No, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> no, but really, um, just want to end with a, a huge thank you to Restaurant Technology Network. It's been wonderful being part of of the network for so many years. Uh, thank you guys for listening to us. Again, would love to hear from you guys. Um, we don't know everything. We don't have a crystal ball. Uh, we've tried to find it, but we haven't yet. So thank you so much. Um, and look forward to connecting. Thank you.